Hello, good afternoon. Uh, I have here with me Jean-Sebastian Gang from the, he's the managing director at the National Bank, Randy Leclerc, the manager of capital markets for the city of Toronto, and Rob Mali, the chief financial officer for TransLink. So the global green bond market has been pretty impressive this year worldwide, and Canada has been no exception. Uh, we've had like a number of first time issuers, including the city of Toronto, which just issued in July uh, uh, a 300 million Canadian dollar bond. Uh, Ottawa had already priced 102 million of 30 year debt in November. In June, Canada also had the first green bond issued by a pension fund, the 1.5 billion issued by the CPPIB. Quebec also sold its first green bond in February last year and followed that with two more transactions this year. Uh, so it's pretty impressive. Uh, what do you guys think is driving this green bond boom in Canada? Mm -hmm. I, I, I think it's a, it's a good question. Um, I'm not sure I can provide the answer, so it's a bad start to the panel. <laughs> I don't answer your questions, but at the end, it's um, maybe the, what we see on the flip side is really more and more demand from investors uh, on, on the product. So, um, what drives their interest from investors? It's it's a, it's a something we don't have an idea, but at the end, if you look at that from let's see, uh, looking at National Bank every every year, we do some roadshow in in the U.S. in uh, in uh, Europe in Canada and. Uh, each year we see more and more interest from investors asking about the product, asking uh, are you looking at it. Uh, more and more have set up some, some specific funds to invest in, uh, in the product. So I think what we see is an increase of, of demand from investors. Uh, the, the, we'll, we'll talk about numbers later, but uh, they're impressive, uh, the size of, of, of the market. Um, so I think it's a mix of issuers um, uh, improving on their corporate social, social um, uh, framework uh, with the fact that investors as well uh, look at the product that brings appetite and which is why some of us are, are here now and are currently looking at a product. How do you see that, Randy? Well, for, uh, for us, it definitely was a part of uh, investor demand was, was a part of it. But also uh, the City of Toronto has a long-standing uh, green program. Um, we've uh, recently renewed it with our report uh, called Transform TO. Uh, and we have a whole division that looks after energy efficiency. Uh, and so from a poly policy perspective, it also worked for us and something that our, our city council endorsed. So um, for finance, uh, where I work, it was a matter of how do we do this? And um, we were approached by not only the investment dealers wanting us to do something, uh, but also investors. And the way that the city does its debt issuance lends itself to a debt, uh, a green bond debt program because of the very specific capital projects that we issue for. So when you add it all up, it just made a lot of sense to us that we could do it. Uh, one of the big factors that we considered was, would it be cost us more the same or cheaper? So uh, it was looking, the uh, city of Ottawa did one previous to us, uh, a little bit cheaper than where they could do a traditional bond. So it just made a lot of sense. And was it cheaper in the end for you? It, there was a little bit, about a basis point better than our traditional bond. That's very interesting. And for you, Rob, I think the story is a bit similar. You told me before that investors were asking you, well, why, why aren't you going green? So what took you so long to go green? <laughs> um, so the context uh, for that is just that uh, TransLink has a long uh, standing history in sustainability. We received the uh, platinum level award with the American Public Transportation Authority, uh, first one in Canada and then one of you that do. So we've uh, naturally been in that, in, that, uh, in that sense. We've also been a conventional bond issuer uh, consistently since 2010. Every year, so we looked at our program and, uh, and also our investments. We recently had an investment plan approved uh, over the next 10 years um, for uh, amount of uh, up to $10.5 billion in capital investments. So we fund a major portion of that. So when we bring these things together, um, as we started talking more about it, uh, we were just assessing it. But still at this point, we were monitoring uh, how the markets were going. We didn't want to pay more uh, <laughs> necessarily, but we want to do the right thing. So the conditions seem to be favorable uh, for that. So as we continue uh, to investigate along the way. Uh, can you tell us a bit about your experience in issuing the green bond and also tell them because they're both planning to do so in the near future? 
Rob and I have had a few conversations already, but uh, I'll uh, discuss what we went through it. As I mentioned, the City of Toronto uh, issues uh, debt against capital projects specifically. So for us, it was just a matter of separating out green versus non-green. Of course, we had to develop a framework that was, uh, ours was reviewed by Sustainalytics, a third party source, uh, and uh, it, it, which wasn't difficult to uh, really develop. Uh, where it got down, I think a little more tricky was when we were picking projects and actually putting metrics around, uh, you know, what was the actual reduction in greenhouse gases, uh, for example. Uh, th that was a little more tricky and we had to get uh, involved our energy efficiency division to uh, to work with some of the other divisions. So it was, we, it was really uh, something they hadn't done before, which was a little more more tricky. Uh, I think as we go along, it'll get better and better and easier to uh, uh, develop those those uh, those metrics around uh, how much reduction in <coughs> greenhouse gases and the other energy efficiency measures that are used. So, um, but that that was the only I guess additional step that was a little bit tricky for us. And are you planning to build out a curve, or was that, or if you just tap the same bond in the yeah, future? Yeah, no, I, I think going forward, we'd like to develop a curve. It, it, for us, it's also driven by the asset life. So for this one, it was a 30-year bond that we did. Um, there will be ones that will be shorter asset life. Definitely our energy efficiency department has ones that are more in the 10-year uh, area. So we'd like to, it, it, generally when we issue, go to each year, we try to issue one 10 year, one 20 year, one 30 year bond in those terms. So we'll probably do something in the future, again, looking at the asset life of those specific green bond projects or green projects. Um, we've also thought about expanding out to, to other type of sustainable bonds as well. But I think for right now, uh, we're gonna focus on green and what we have in the, uh, in the sort of the, the lineup as far as, as what we can uh, debenture or issue debt for. Great. And uh, was it very hard developing the framework for your first bond? And uh, mm -hmm. can you tell us about the assets that back this bond that you're planning to issue? And mm -hmm. any more detail you can give sure, us sure, about the sure. bond? So to, to, to give some color to everyone, we, we did uh, establish a sustainability bond framework uh, that was just uh, freshly finished yesterday. Uh, so right on time to be able to talk about it today. Um, so we've not issued anything yet. Um, uh, I think the the great feature about the about the ESG framework is that it's at the end it's only a framework. So it's uh, uh, then we can tap whatever uh, bond program we want all over the world. So we we, we could do U.S. dollar, Euro, CAD, um, uh, MTN, uh, even structure notes. Uh, so the, the framework is pretty flexible in terms of potential issuance that, that we can print. Um, and at the end, the, 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 the debt for the investors is really the same instrument that it would buy from the, the plain uh, MTN uh, issuance program. Uh, so there's no added risk. It, there's only some disclosure about the framework. So it's really the same type of assets uh, in the framework. Um, so, so, so basically for, for National Bank, we, we've built that framework uh, to be aligned with um, uh, basically the, 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 the corporate uh, social report of the bank is aligned to a couple of principles. Uh, environment and, uh, and the community part of, are part of that. Um, we, over the years, the bank did um, uh, some 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 work to uh, decrease our uh, environment footprint uh, on the buildings, or uh, we're now we're now neutral carbon, uh, which is a great feature uh, for us. Uh, on the social front as well, we did partner with a couple of players uh, on the social front to uh, to to be a player in that, and we felt let's combine the both of them in a, a new type of, of framework, which is sustainability. People. Hear a lot about green, but basically, uh, sustainability is now uh, a new trend, and some of the key issuers are converting their programs even to sustainability because it's more, more complete as a program. But at the end, as 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 was mentioned by 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 my friend here, um, the the framework per se, to have a second party opinion, uh, it is some work, it is some cost. Um, uh, it's it's not a hard project. We've done harder uh, mm -hmm. over the years. Covered bond was. More tricky, I would say, mm -hmm. um, but the framework is fine. But then, for sure, you have to support the structure. So you need your governance uh, committee <coughs> internally at the, at the at the shop to uh, to uh, to follow um, the approval process of the project, to govern uh, the the structure that that was done, Absolutely. to approve the issuance that you that you do. You want to be sure you have enough assets uh, to 
to, to match the, the, the liability that you've done. Uh, and a good point about the, the tenor as well. If you, we don't issue 20 years, but to issue 20 years, we want to be sure you're going to have product for 20 years as well. So it's really the LM or to match really uh, both, both of them. But the framework is not complex um, to, to issue, uh, but I think it's a good commitment for, for the firm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first players were the public sector. There were some banks as well. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of corporates, <coughs> why don't we see as much yet, do you think? Mm -hmm. It's a good question. Um, looking at numbers, basically, um, the expectation are that uh, green bond are going to be around a 250 billion market uh, this year. It was 160 billion last year. Uh, at typical, the financial are, are like uh, this year up to now, 27% financial, 20% corporation worldwide. So typically, all around the world, corporations are big, big players of of, of that product. Um, so, so why not in Canada? Exactly. Uh, that's that's a good question. Um, typically, uh, historically, I think that product is maybe more for uh, or the the investor demand that we that we feel uh, come mainly from from European investors in the past. Now, more and more U.S. investors asking question about it. So, I guess you you have to issue internationally to maybe see that that request from, from investor on the product. Um, and uh, at the end, um, let's say to, to issue a, a, a green bond, uh, you don't need your full your corporation to be fully green everywhere. Um, with the, 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 the usage of, of, of funds uh, uh, process, basically, as long as a corporation has a process that could fit as green or social or, or both, uh, they can still still issue that type of bond. So I think it's maybe it's a misunderstanding of of what it is really an ESG, but uh, uh, it's it's there to fund a special purpose. Uh, could be the corporation or could be really the product. In the case that we've done, we we've identified uh, five different type of asset class that fits green or social. Um, so it's uh, on the green front, it's really it's renew renewable energy, clean transportation. Uh, we have as well um, the, 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 the green buildings. Uh, on the social front, um, uh, access to basic and essential services uh, and the housing. So as you see, it's different pockets that the bank uh, is already a lender and that will continue to, sure. to participate. But it's not an overall commitment. It's really to a specific niche to grow. Rob, can you tell us about uh, the framework? Was it very hard putting it together? And can you tell us about the bond you're planning to issue? Um, well, I could tell you a little bit about the story. So sure. um, given that uh, we're ambitious in the sense that we desire to be a sustainable transportation uh, mm -hmm. agency, and we're in a part of the world as well and a part of the country that uh, prides itself on being one of the most livable regions uh, in the world. And uh, city of Vancouver definitely has ambition to be the greenest city in the world. So with that policy mandate, um, that aligns. We also have a great story to tell. As I said, we are uh, embarking upon the most aggressive uh, transportation services expansion in our region's history. Um, we have a lot of, um, of great uh, support from that perspective with regards to a fully funded uh, plan now, you know, including our, our funding portion, um, which is uh, totals uh, about 10.5 billion over the next, uh, the next uh, 10 years. So we would need to fund about two to three billion of that, let's say. And um, we also um, have just uh, figured out that, you know, diversity is important as well. So we, we do realize we've been issuing, uh, we have a total portfolio of about 1.53 billion in debt outstanding now on conventional bonds. So we think it's a good time to, uh, to evaluate uh, this market. So we are working on our framework. We haven't uh, completed that yet. But it's providing a lot of guidance, also in informing us that the vast majority of our investments all fall uh, well within the certified uh, green bond framework uh, for either clean transportation, etc. We're also responsible for a lot of cycle paths and uh, and walkways through the through the city and the region. So that uh, so that uh, all kind of aligns as well in terms of our in terms of our ambitions. So we want to put ourselves in a position where we have that choice. Um, you know, as soon as we can, and then we'll, uh, we'll take it from there. And uh, would you still issue a green bond if it meant spending more? And how much more were you, are you willing to spend for it to be green? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, at this point, uh, given the structure, of the, the thing we like, I'll say I like about the green bond framework right now is that it really is a conventional bond, you know, with the additional um, requirements for disclosure and certification. Um, again, for us, it's not that onerous. 
given that we get a lot of our funding from senior government, uh, both provincial and federal uh, governments. So a lot of the projects we work on, we have a high degree of transparency and reporting already on. Um, and the mandate as to why we're doing them was also justified on the basis of sustainability. So that, uh, that, works, uh, that works really well uh, all the way out through the future. So we feel that that uh, is consistent with, uh, with the requirements. And what about you? Would you be willing to pay more? Um, <laughs> and how much more? Yeah, well, I, it's all subject, <laughs> I think, to the situation we're in. And, and um, the, uh, I, I think we're very cost conscious, uh, the city of Toronto. So it, it has to uh, make sense financially. But uh, and we're going to be issuing the debt in any case uh, in our program too. Uh, most of the things that we issue debt for, we've already spent the money on anyways. We have a uh, unfinanced uh, capital uh, that uh, we still need to issue for. So so we can actually demonstrate to people we've already spent the money and are are, are wanting to issue conventional bonds or green. Of course, green has to make sense from a financial standpoint too. Uh, and um, but uh, the the additional work, I think, uh, as far as uh, man hours uh, input, the people are already there, and uh, it's just more or less really getting everyone to work together uh, on uh, the metrics around, as I mentioned before, those uh, the uh, the actual projects and and look at them uh, to develop numbers around you know, within our framework. Right. Uh, can you tell us a bit about the investor base that first bought your bond? What, where are they located? What kind of investors are they? Well, we issued in Canadian dollars and they were primarily Canadian dollar investors. And I mentioned before that uh, institutional investors were um, uh, approaching us already. Uh, the dealer community had kind of separated them out into what they call dark green, light green, and then non uh, green uh, investors. So uh, the issue was oversubscribed, which we were very happy to see. Uh, the uh, methodology we went through the process, the issue was slightly different than how we do it normally. Uh, usually we, uh, for a traditional bond, we do a, uh, a bot deal. Uh, however, this was the uh, through the, the book build system, so we could see uh, who was on the list and uh, who was buying them. So, uh, of course, the dark green investors got preference uh, because it was oversubscribed, and um, uh, and the light green got most of their bonds as well. So, we um, we were quite happy how it went. And the investor base, I would say, it was uh, a lot of. Uh, uh, pension slash mutual fund institutional asset managers that were that were investing, uh, but as well we had others that uh, traditionally buy uh, City of Toronto bonds. I know I talked to them at this conference that um, it didn't matter whether they were green or not green uh, yeah, to them. They they just like the name anyways. So that makes sense. And what about you? Would you be willing to pay more and how much more? I was wondering if you would ask the question of to course. me. Of course. And that was passed. Not that I got that okay. answer, answer is no. from them. Answer but. is no. <laughs> no, but uh, let's see, to put a story about it, we, there's already extra cost and work to, uh, to put the framework in place. Um, uh, the bank is ready to do it. Uh, we think it makes sense where we are uh, to, to work on that framework. So it makes total sense to, to spend some, some, some cost and time uh, from the organization on, on, on that type of product. Um, when we come up with issuance, um, we are frequently sure that we issue a couple of benchmarks per year in different currencies. Um, in my role, the, the, the curve is really important of where we price. Sure. Um, if you look at the typical investor base of a green bond, um, it's, it's a big market, but really the niche investors from that, uh, that product are still growing. So it's not a big size of the, uh, the book when, when, you, when you do a transaction, uh, which means maybe you'll save one beeps. Uh, typically, there's no historical uh, uh, proof that uh, you really save on the primary market. Saying in your market, the paper trades better uh, because there's a, uh, it's maybe one of the last paper that investors will want to sell because they know they will not, never find it again because it sure. don't trade. So the secondary performance is better. So from the investor point of view, they have, they have the same paper. Uh, bigger uh, diversification uh, because there's more investors coming in, in the original books. So uh, a same quality product that trades better. Uh, it makes no sense to, uh, to have a wider spread. Maybe it should be the opposite. We should save that beeps at that point. Um, uh, and uh, uh, but really, to um, the curve is is relevant, and there's no way we could we, we should print wider than 
our credit curve uh, and our rating uh, does does uh, does show. Uh, we've done this year uh, another inaugural, which was a test pilot for a blockchain trade uh, that was done uh, one year Yankee City in the U.S. and uh, we've done 150 million on this one. And really, the first thing when we talk about the, that trade is uh, to be sure it don't it won't issue wider than our current curve because otherwise it's a no-go. Not a product. Makes sense. And uh, what market developments do you think are necessary to make the green bond market keep growing? I mean, what, what do we need for it to keep expanding, in your mm -hmm. opinion? I think for every market to, uh, to work, you need buyers and sellers. Um, mm -hmm. So um, investors should still continue to focus on, on the product uh, and um, continue working on the, uh, the, 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 the creation of new funds that focus on that asset class. Uh, that will uh, increase the investor demand, increase number of investors in the book. That will for sure drive the issuers as well uh, on the other side to, uh, to, to work on the product. Uh, and uh, like every market, I think uh, confidence and transparency are important. Um, so to have a, a proper framework, um, a proper external review, uh, we have also an external review on our, on our pro program, which was done by VGO, another uh, competitor to Sustain Analytics. So there are a couple of them. So really, uh, the confidence and the transparency, I think, is important uh, and uh, is a key for the market to be uh, to be out there. What do you feel is key for the market to keep expanding? Um, so I think I think it is a natural evolution. Um, I think as we saw ESG kind of come all the way through the equity markets and funds, etc. So in the fixed income market which I've involved in for a long time, it, uh, it's, uh, it allows investors to have that next level of transparency and connection to impact being made uh, through these types of investments, even though it's not an equity investment. So I believe that that's the future uh, in one way or another. And I also think as an issue where we want to do it with a way that has some integrity, right? that uh, has some standards to apply, even though they're still in the works of being developed, I think, in a more holistic way. Um, but it allows us to tell our story in a more connected way. And we just think that adds value to our overall offering. So on the question of price, I didn't really answer that. But uh, yeah. Yeah, the, the point is, I, I think we definitely see the market conditions very favorable. And uh, seeing that sentiment with more mandates being provided to a lot of our investors out there, especially institutional investors. So it's just a matter of matching that demand and, then, and, then, uh, and progressing that way. So hopefully it gives us a competitive advantage as well, if anything. Um, relative to uh, relative to the choices investors have Hopefully, out there, yeah. and what do you think, Randy? What's your view? Well, one of the words uh, I liked that Rob used was evolution. It, it, it's it's definitely evolving. Even the terminology uh, around uh, what should be included and what shouldn't be included. One of the things we had to deal with uh, was whether or not um, state of good repair uh, type project should be included in in it or not. Um, and you know, it was, it was kind of foggy whether or not investors would would like that. And we found out on a more global context uh, that it uh, they were acceptable. But initially, everyone thinks of a green bond. It's a new project or a single project that you're going to uh, be debenturing for, issuing debt for. So um, even the you know the terminology I used before, dark green, light green, these are things that haven't been quite defined yet. Um, and um, uh, and one thing I learned uh, here recently too, that investors now are not only looking at a particular green bond, but now they're looking at, at a, whether it's a government or a corporation uh, and whether they're totally green and are they uh, committed. So it's great if you're trying to issue a green bond, but you know, what about your, your firm or your organization? Are they also green? So I think as we go along, there'll be this evolution, as Rob mentioned, and uh, it'll probably get uh, better defined as we go along. And you mentioned about uh, looking into other sorts of uh, investments, sustainable investments. Which are they? Well, for, for the city of Toronto, we have, um, we have for example, social housing. Uh, so that, that might be an area. We haven't specifically got into outlining uh, where we'd go with that. But, uh, you know, as far as the big umbrella picture of sustainability, uh, that might be something that we could also look at, you know, on a, under a more a larger umbrella of sustainability and issuing debt for, for our affordable social housing program. Thank you. Unfortunately, we ran out of time, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs>